Hello, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me today for this video all about the upcoming Sephora sale. It's a great time to save on some high-end makeup, and I was thinking about how I might share some favorites because I feel like I've talked recently about a lot of great things that are available at Sephora. So I was thinking maybe what might be most useful is like a top 10 all-time favorites. And then after that, I could share like some newcomers that I really enjoy, okay? So I'm gonna take you through this list. You might be able to predict some of the things that are gonna be on this list, but I just feel like it's worth sharing. I'm not saying every person must put these 10 items in their cart if they don't have them. I'm just saying there might be a certain product here or there that you find, oh, I need one of those. And in this situation, I can get some money off. And here we go. Number one, my T3 Hot Rollers. Now this style is brought to you by the T3 Hot Rollers. There's a set available on Sephora and they ain't cheap, but they are my all-time favorite hot rollers. And what I really love about this set, I used to use some T3 rollers that were in the one inch size and these are the volumizing size it's a set of eight rollers which is perfect for my whole head of hair and there are a couple of sizes included some really jumbo ones and some slightly smaller ones and I will tell you nothing holds curl in my hair longer than these I tell you guys I love watching some hot roller videos on TikTok and seeing people give you that satisfying before and after with their hot rollers but if you have super duper straight hair that fights you and really wants to fall flat, um, this would be an ideal set for volume. And a nice thing about hot rollers is that you do not have to put them in perfectly to get an effect from them. And I feel like I could probably get even more of an effect if I wanted to like hairspray them as I put them in. But these rollers are flocked and I kind of want to keep them nice, you know, <laughs> so I don't want to get them too gunked up with product in that process. But typically for me, if I'm going to do rollers, I will put them in at the start of my makeup routine and then by the end I take them out. The heat up is fast with these, but the longer you can leave leave them in the better, especially if your hair does tend to fight curl a little bit. But I also love that there are clips with these rollers because that I think is so much easier than the pins for me and you just roll it up, throw a clip on and you're good. And then when you take them out, you've got that instant volume. You can tip your head over. I like to really like work my fingers into my scalp and get those areas that have been sectioned off kind of like all work together now. And then you could run a brush through or just kind of style it with your fingers. I usually tease the sections around my face just a little bit and then hairspray them just to get a little better hold. But for a basic everyday style that I could just set it and forget it, you know, I love the crock pot mentality with beauty when I can get it, just put it in and let it do its work. These are phenomenal. They are absolutely the best hot roller on the market. And guys, I have experimented with so much. I have thought on numerous occasions I was coming up with the dupe for these, you know, the low cost thing that could work just as well. But this is really the best for holding that curl in the hair. And even by day's end, I will still have this bend to my hair, this pretty kind of shape that I'm going after that's glam. And bringing back that 90s volumized hair, I mean, this is what it's all about. So I love my hot rollers. Number Number two, I'm gonna mention my IT Cosmetics Miracle Water, which is the first thing that goes on my face every single morning. Um, I've gone through multiple bottles of this and I can only find it at Sephora, but it's a three-in-one tonic, skin brightening radiance booster, anti-aging treatment essence, and skin softening micellar cleanser. So I just use a cotton round and I go all over my face. I do not wash my face in the morning. I just use this before the makeup and I feel like it gets everything nice and ready to go before my makeup. I have not experienced any kind of problem skin as a result of this. I really swear by it. And it's just one of those daily, daily things. Like I will not go a day without using this. So I thought it really belonged on the top 10 list. Also guys, I know we've talked about Bobbi Brown Vitamin and Rich Face Base as far as the Ulta sale goes. And you know, it's sold at Sephora as well. So if you didn't get in on it from Ulta, you could add it to your cart for the Sephora sale. This is what I'm working out of now. I mean, if it shows my love for it, I've gone through multiple jars of this. And right now I'm just kind of scraping that bottom part. And when I'm done there, I am moving into actually the super size of this stuff. This is the way I prep my skin every day. This is the way I prep my skin. After my micellar cleanser, I do my three serums from Glossier and then I put this all over and it just makes my skin juicy and hydrated and ready for the makeup. If I want a matte look, if I want a full coverage under eye, it really doesn't matter what I want to go for. I feel like this hydrates the skin to where everything looks fresh in a sense. I love the smell in it. I know some people would say, well, any kind of scented skincare is a no-no, but it's 
refreshing, it's kind of lemony. It's just the perfect thing for the morning and I love it. Again, I don't go a day without it. Number four, I'm saying NARS foundations. There's a crazy thing going on with NARS foundations and it's like I enjoy every foundation that comes out. I like the sheer glow. I like their new light reflecting one. My top two favorites though are probably the soft matte because the staying power is insane with this one and it really is just flawless matte coverage. But um, the one I'm wearing today and probably my longest standing favorite is the Natural Radiant Longwear. This I wear in the shade Vienna. This I have in the shade Patagonia. Patagonia may be just a tinge dark for me. I wore this in a recent video. You can check that out. But the Natural Radiant Longwear is so beautiful. It's full coverage. It's very thin, but it sits on the skin with this natural skin-like texture. You get it all worked in and it doesn't look makeup-y, yet it covered a lot. I'm wondering how far back I could go in Emily Awards and find this as a winner. It has been up there in terms of quality foundations for a long, long time. And I just think it's special that a brand can be so consistent with different versions, different formulas of foundations, and yet I like them all on my skin. But this, I can always count on it to have great staying power, impeccable coverage, and yet a really natural look on the skin. Now, what did I use to blend that out? I have two more favorites to share here. My Sephora 56 brush. This would be an incredible buy if you don't have this. This is the same as the little red one that you see me use sometimes. Same brush, just this has the shorter handle. And I got it as a VIB Rouge perk at one point. But brush head is the same. This is what the full size brush looks like. This can do foundation. This is great for your cream contour or cream blushes as well. This could pop on a cream highlight highlight. Um, it is just the perfect size to be able to kind of press in or buff in your coverage products. Oh, it's great for concealer as well. Don't let me forget that. But today I used it to get my foundation going. And then I also used it to blend in a cream contour. This is an ideal brush as well. This would be like the first kind of thing I reach for to blend out any kind of liquid blush too. So it's a must have. I mean, this gets used almost daily for me in some form or fashion. So I would highly, highly recommend that. It's dense, it's soft, it's got the perfect kind of taper there to just make your blending process so easy and size-wise. See how it fits the cheek so well if blush is what you're doing, but then all over foundation, it's perfect for that too. And then also, who could forget a beauty blender, okay? We love a beauty blender for blending out that foundation. I feel there is something so unique about the real beauty blender. The texture is like no other sponge that I have. It's a little more porous, it's got a few more like holes in it. It's not just like 100% squish. I feel like if you have a beauty blender, you know what I'm talking about. There's something a little bit different for the pink classic beauty blender. Yes, I washed this just the other day. It does not look pretty right now because I've just used it, but I love doing foundations and concealers with this. Of course, you dampen it, you wring it out, and I love how it can take a concealer and kind of make it work across an even broader surface area, and I think as I'm getting older, I probably appreciate the Beauty Blender even more because it kind of guards against any excess on the skin, okay? So if you might over apply a little certain something, continually going over it with the Beauty Blender can sort of regulate that a bit. But it's not just about how soft is the sponge, it's about the texture on the outside and how you don't just feel like you're bopping a big squishy sponge on your face, but you're actually working something in a little bit more, given that slightly more porous texture on the outside. Now would be a great time to try it if you haven't already. I'm really hitting the classics here, aren't I? My Smashbox and Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. I wear this in the shade Fair Light, and this is a product, this is a two-pronged thing. It's going to brighten, and it's also going to really hydrate as well. So this is a product you can layer with another concealer, or you can wear it on its own, but I love it getting into that deepest part of the under eye area. Like side of the nose, inner corner is a great place for this because it just brings light back to that area. And then if you wanna go over this with a skin tone concealer, you can get so much evenness and really full coverage with it, but even on its own, it's going to brighten and cancel out to some extent. And there are many little potted um, correctors that are out there. The very hard thing to duplicate is the texture of this. It is 
so, so creamy. And if it weren't this creamy, I wouldn't advise like putting this on and then throwing another concealer on top of it. But it does have such an emollient quality to it that it can be part of a whole concealer routine and just work really, really well on the under eye area. So I can usually tell a difference on days when I've used this and days that I haven't. I think it's a really phenomenal and very unique product. All right, talk about kind of an unsung hero sort of product in my collection. I use it every single day without fail. It's my Shiseido Lash Curler. I'm holding it here in the gold. The regular version of it is silver. Whatever the case, it's about the squish. It's about the size here and the degree of curve. It fits the lash line so well and it just curls the lashes like nothing else. It is my favorite lash curler of all time. I've had several lash curlers over time that I've become very like this with and this is definitely the best one. Again, you have to be able to push that um, top bar down into something and really get some squish going. When I use this, I'm holding it on there for probably 30 seconds and I'm kind of pulsing as I do. Okay, so squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. We talked about how the hair doesn't like to be curly. My lashes are on that team as well. They would like to be straight and point down. So we want them up and like this and this is the best tool for it. Just absolutely, 100%. For mascara, if we're talking all time favorite picks, I've got to say IT Cosmetics Superhero. This is the ultimate in volumizing thickness, length. I mean, I've been on a roll with good mascaras lately. I feel like a lot of different things that I've tried have worked out for me. But you know, this is the standard I'm holding them all to. I want them to have the dramatic look of Superhero and I want them to hold the curl like Superhero does. The most special thing about Superhero is how it can get the job done quickly without a ton of raking through. I think it's still probably supreme in terms of that aspect. But yes, it's for sure my all-star mascara for curl challenge lashes. It's a great thing. And for just sparse and people who don't have as thick of lashes as they want, this would be an awesome thing to try and just a great time to do it. My last thing on my top 10 list is my um, Sol de Janeiro, the Bombdia Bright Spray. Oh my gosh. I've raved on it before, but it is the scent I want to be associated with in life. It is a little tropical, but also kind of yummy. I feel like it's got some vanilla in there. Um, my girls want this sprayed on them before they go to school. You can get it in your hair because your hair carries a lot of scent, you know? There's a smaller size and there's a larger size. I've gone through a whole small size, so now we've upgraded to the larger one. And yet that easily made this list because it's such an essential <laughs> In my life. I mean, it's kind of funny to say that because body mist, you're like, what? Is that really that great? It is incredible. And I love the lotion as well. I have a big tub of the lotion and that's usually what I put on after a shower. But if we're talking like what I couldn't live without status, I would have to say the spray. Now guys, if I could have a little honorable mention to this list, if there was one other thing that I could tack on really at the end, it would be Huda Beauty. I really love the Huda brand overall. There are several things that I think are really awesome. The stick foundation, great coverage. We're talking just blanket out coverage all over the skin. Looks really pretty and fresh though. I love the Tantor cream bronzer, although that's not the only cream bronzer on the market I like. I've got a real thing for my M Cosmetics sticks, but the Tantor in light, that's what I'm wearing today. I blended it out with this brush, the 56 that I mentioned, and it's just a great product too. But then also, the eye palettes, okay? I feel like you could almost close your eyes and point to one and I'd be like, yeah, I like that eye palette. But for just starting out, I love the little nude obsessions. There's a light, but my favorites are the rich and the medium. I'm actually wearing the rich one today. Look at the color scheme, no one's surprised, but smooth shimmers, really beautiful and easy to work with mattes there. That's gonna give you kind of like a berry look. And then the medium has some kind of like rosy browns, just a great matte and shimmer balance. And I'm just really enjoyed the quality of her eyeshadows across the board, but this is a nice way to get maybe a smaller amount and just try it. But Huda is a great brand, so I thought I'd just toss that out there. And then newer loves. Here's the newer love section, which a lot of this stuff has been talked about very recently, even in my favorites video. Um, I put my Cali Ray Come Hell or High Water mascara on this list. If you like a tubing mascara um, that's going to give dramatic lashes, but also be something you can wear on your lower lashes and it will not 
smudge off. This is great. I love the size of the brush. Really super easy to control. It does hold the curl. It will hold the curl all day. And then when it comes off, it doesn't come off like a big smear. It's almost like little um, rubbery bits, almost rubbery for lack of a better word. They come off of the eye. They release from the eye. And you don't have this big smeary thing happening upon removal, but that's a newer favorite. Um, just the whole Kosas revealer thing, as I talked about in my recent favorites video, so I won't go too long on this, but um, just hop right back over to that if you want to see a quick application of the revealer foundation and the concealer. We're talking a medium coverage foundation that gives the skin life. It's packed with like good skincare ingredients and it just looks glowing and gorgeous on, and it does pair so well with the concealer. In the foundation, I am light plus cool 180. That's light with cool pink undertones, and then I am 2.5C on the concealer. Along with that routine, I've really fallen in love with the Cloud Set Powder. Okay, I wear that in breezy. So if you're wanting that medium coverage, perfect for spring and summer, kind of lightweight, yet gives your skin a little added hydration, yet so natural looking on the skin, that's a big key point with this. Um, you might want to give this little routine a shot. So I'm shouting that out. Also my Tower 28 Power Hour. Um, Power Hour is the shade. It's their cream lip and cheek. I am wearing that as my blush today. I love the earthiness of this color. It is kind of a deep, dusty rose, but there's a little warmth to it. And it honestly makes me think summer, kind of a toasty vibe. I really enjoy that one. Another newer fave is this new lip from Makeup by Mario. It's the Ultra Suede Cozy Lip Cream in Pinky Brown. This can go over even dry lips and make them look more flawless, but it is truly matte, okay? And it doesn't have a 100% dry down. It still stays just a little bit creamy, but it does hang on, okay? And I don't love a ton of nudes, but nude lips are what I'm wanting to wear a little bit more these days, and this one passes the test. I love that. Also from that brand, if you like a fresh, pink, youthful, bring back the life to your skin kind of cream blush. His blush stick in the shade Raspberry. Don't be scared of this, guys. Just a little dab would be fine. I can link to my application below. It has the built-in brush. This is stunning. You might not think you want to approach a shade that bright, but I promise you it is something so special. And then one of my newest finds is probably my Fenty Nude Lipstick. This is in the shade Mother Lubba, and you get the like component that holds the lip lipstick and then you have this. So this is refillable basically. And then this is the lipstick. It comes with a little disposable cap that you take off. And then this is my overall color on my lips and I'm really so happy with that tone. I feel really comfortable in this shade as a nude lip. It's a creamy matte. And then I like pairing my Revlon Colorstay lip liner in nude with that just to clean up the outside. And then I never really thought I'd be singing my the praises of this product because I always thought, oh, it's a little much. It's a little thick, sometimes a little annoying, the Fenty Gloss, um, but I have it in Fussy, and I've realized, you know, just use the side or the back of the applicator. You don't have to dig into that big part right there that carries tons of product, but just kind of use the edge and get a minimal amount on the lips. And it really feels good and extra creamy, and it makes that nude lip look so like finished and polished. So guys, was this more information than anybody asked for? I just wanted to give you the all-time top 10. So if you were thinking, you know, what's the absolute best that Sephora has to offer, not just thinking about the current faves or the current hot stuff. That was my full top 10, plus an honorable mention, plus the newer things that have really caught my eye lately. So let me know in the comments, please, if you have any questions about anything I've talked about. And I will try to provide some links down below to applications of things that I wasn't able to show you today. But yeah, thank you so, so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you again very soon. I love you guys. Bye.